Today, we'll meet with our new board president, and he'll give us the latest on the Tenassi Rebuild Project, village finances, and the board's take on projections for build-out. It's all coming right now and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to your Teleco Village POA Board Quarterly Update. I'm your host, Carla Johnson, and I'm here today with Board President Bob Brunetti. He's going to uh, help me take a look at Village topics from the first quarter of this year. Welcome, Bob, and thank you for joining us on Teleco Village Network. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Carla. Well, before we jump into our discussion topics today, let's take a few moments and let our viewers in on a little bit about you. This is your third year as a member of the POA Board and your first year as President. Tell us what brought you to Teleco Village and why you were interested in serving on the POA board. Well, my wife and I uh, moved here in 2013. We actually bought our property in 2010. Uh, when we retired in 2013, we moved into our house in Kahiti. Uh, we came basically because our son had moved to Knoxville in 2008 for a job, and we came down to visit him, and we sort of fell in love with Teleco Village, wound up buying a lot, and then and moving here uh, three years later, and we've been here approximately 11 years at this point in time. All right. Now that you've been elected president of the board, what experience do you bring that you feel like will be valuable in this role? Well, I've been really been involved for the last seven years. I spent a year on the uh, HOA board, three years on the golf committee, and now three years on the uh, POA board. So I've been involved for s four, seven years. Um, I've got to know a little bit of how Teleco Village works. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will say to anyone who's out there who wishes to get involved that the best way to do it really is to get onto a advisory committee or at least go to an advisory committee meeting. There are 10 advisory committees. And if you have something you're interested in, apply for it. And so I, I sort of follow that, that track from the advisory committee to the board. Uh, and you were always involved in your community even before you moved to Teleco Village, right? That's correct. Back where I lived and we lived in Connecticut and my wife and I both lived there our entire lives. We never really lived, that, lived anywhere else. I was uh, on the Parks and Rec Commission for approximately 12 years, three years as chairman. That had a public golf course as well as the regular I items you would have in the Parks and Rec Commission, parks, beaches, swings, the lake, et cetera, et cetera. So I was familiar with budgets and how golf courses work, and I thought it would be something I would be uh, helpful at. Well, I'm sure all of that experience is serving you well. So we're glad you've continued your community involvement here at Teleco Village. And thank you for serving as on the board and as president. I know that it's a significant time commitment, and we do appreciate all you do for the village. Well, thank you very much. So we've just completed the first quarter, and the Tenassi Rebuild Project does remain top of mind. So why don't you bring us up to speed? Uh, Tenassi Rebuild Project, well, it's been gone going for now almost a year and a half. It's gone a lot slower than we had hoped. Unfortunately, we had an incident with the insurance company where we had to take the extraordinary step of, of suing our own insurance company because they refused to pay for the removal of the foundation and the, up, and the landscaping. That has been resolved. They are going to pay for the removal of the foundation. They're going to pay, pay us approximately $4 million in total. Well, not in total, uh, $4 million for the building. There is other extras that they've already paid for. Uh, right now, the committee, which is about 15 people, has uh, come up with a final plan or a final draft of a building, two, actually two buildings with a breezeway, which is approximately 16,500 square feet. Uh, they had started out with a 22,000 square foot building, but it was brought down to 16,500. Uh, it looks to be a very nice looking drawing anyways. Uh, the board has approved that. Uh, building concept anyways to go out to bid and we're be going out to bid in the near future. All right so you guys have approved the building design and of course cost is always a consideration and, and there are lots of elements involved mm -hmm. in that cost. Tell us a little bit about the breakdown. Well the estimated cost we got was approximately 11 million dollars. That's that's again as an estimate we are hoping that it'll, it'll come in as less. Uh, part of that however is the new parking lot and a new putting ring. We should be, you know, $11 million is not just the building itself. There's approximately $2 million in the parking lot because we're going to be tearing up the entire putting green that's there now. 
making that into a parking lot, doubling the amount of spaces. Uh, one of the complaints we always heard from about Tanasi was there was no parking. Uh, in right. addition to the parking lot at approximately $2 million, there's a new putting green, which is about $300,000. The architect fee is $275,000. So you take that little over $2.5 million off the $11 million, and you're really looking at an $8 million or an $8 million five building. Um, one of the things that we talked about was um, insurance replacement costs. And as a result of all of that, you guys have formed mm -hmm. a new subcommittee, right? That is correct. Uh, as a result of the Tanasi fire, the POA board has uh, created a subcommittee dealing with just insurance, taking a look at all our insurance policies, myself, Chet, uh, Russell Bearden, who's the uh, insurance guy at the POA office, and two property owners who are familiar with insurance or have insurance backgrounds. We have hired a new broker. We are looking at the, all the policies to ensure that we are properly insured or fully insured as much as we can be anyways. And then looking, also looking at self-insuring some items. Hmm. Uh, so that should result in a cost savings overall? It should result in a cost savings. It already, it already resulted in last year in a $60,000 cost savings. Uh, and hopefully we'll do again the same, same again this year. All right, so let's review a little bit. Just let's review the timeline for Tanasi from right now. What do we got going on? Right now, the timeline is the architect is finishing up the final specs. They should be delivered by April 26th. That's the day they're supposed to be here by. At that point, Jeff DeGula, the property uh, the purchasing agent, will go out and send the, the specs out to about 10 to 20 contractors within a 100-mile radius. Uh, we hope to have those back by the end of May. Memorial Day falls in there, so probably June 1st would be a better date to get them back in by. At that time, the uh, committee, the Tanasi committee, will look at uh, picking the two or three best, review those individually, and then bring, hopefully bring something to the board uh, for the June meeting uh, the board can uh, vote on. That's great. So thank you very much for that update, and we're looking forward to those bids coming in and getting this project underway. Obviously, we'll keep following this progress, and we'll keep our viewers updated. During the February meeting, the board heard a report from the Long Range Planning Advisory Committee. A notable topic in that report was the village build-out projection in 2027. What's the board's take on this projection and how will it affect the village and our finances? Well, Felico Village, as probably most of you know, has 6,850 approved building lots. Um, we just approved the other day in the ACC meeting 5, house number 5,450. So that leaves about 1,300 lots to go. Now of those lots, there are some that are probably not buildable, though I used to say that, and based on what I've seen lately around the village, you really can't say that anymore, that that's not a buildable lot. Uh, there are a lot of people who own double lots or more, or double lots or an extra lot, so the, uh, there's probably less than 1,000 buildable lots, 1,000 more lots they've been built on. I mean, in the last three or four years, 20 through 23, we built 983 homes. Wow. Uh, which has obviously had an impact on our water and sewer system, on our amenities, the use of our amenities, uh, and build out. Uh, build out is projected by the uh, Long Range Planning Committee to 2027, but I think it'll be a slower projection because of several items. One, interest rates and cost of cost of building, interest rates, um, difficulty in the lots themselves, that, you know, the, all the really good lots are gone for the most part. There may be one or two or five somewhere in the village, but for the most part. So I think the projection will go down, or the amount per year will go down, and that obviously affects our finances and the, the building fees we get are going to be reduced. So over the last four years, we've received a lot of money in building fees, uh, which are gonna, is gonna definitely gonna slow down over the next few years. Right, so I know in 2019, uh, we talked last year that um, P the POA had owned 600 lots at that time. Um, the marketing department has, has sold some of those lots. Can you tell us, a little, give us a little update on that? Yes, that's correct. Back in 2019, the, the POA owned approximately 600 lots, uh, which had taken back through foreclosure, been given back to the village, tax sales, and other, in other ways. The marketing department between then and now has done a remarkable job. They have sold over 500 of those, those lots. Uh, all, so those lots are now all income producing lots in the, uh, by paying their POA monthly fee. Presently we have 92 lots the POA still owns. Uh, none of them are for sale at this point in time because they all are tied up in litigation or trusts or, or estates. So we, right now we have no POA lots for sale or 
Well, five years ago, we had 600. So for that variety of reasons that you've talked about, you do expect growth to slow down a little bit. How many homes do you project will be permitted in this year, in 2024? The board projected 156 new homes this year uh, based on the availability of lots and just a natural slowdown based on the economy. Okay, great. So there are always a lot of moving parts to consider, and sometimes the projected build-out date does seem like a moving target. But we appreciate the LRPAC, the board, and the POA staff for keeping an eye on this growth and preparing for the impact that it has on our village finances, amenities, and infrastructure. At some point, I guess, we'll be looking for new revenue streams. We're right? always looking for new revenue streams. Uh, that's one of the things most of the board members, when they ran for the board, talked about that uh, we have to get new revenue streams coming in in the, in the future. We just can't depend on building. Moving on to food services, we know that on January 1st, the POA took over management of the village restaurants after several years with a third party contractor. Included are the Yacht Club, Toqua Sports Bar and Grill, the Kahiti Pub and Grill, and the new restaurant to be built at Tenassi will be included as well. 90 days in, how are things going? Well, they seem to be going very well. We've had a lot of mostly well, really great comments about the food and the service. This was a big undertaking by the board to take on the restaurants, not just one restaurant, but three restaurants, and in the future, four restaurants, which uh, we've taken on approximately 80 employees through the employee, uh, the employee count. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer them benefits and other perks, I guess, to, to stay on. So we didn't lose very many employees. We kept most of the employees that were there. Um, but so far, there are, you know, there are growing pains, like everybody, anything else, any other business you're in, there are growing pains. There have been some personnel changes, but uh, so far, all the indications are very positive. Now that the POA has management of the restaurants, who did, who's heading that up? Okay. We have a director of food services, his name is Skyler McClurkin. Um, Skyler, Skyler worked for AWE. He was basically Andy's second in command, and he was the manager of the Yacht Club. Uh, in addition to Schuyler staying on as the Director of Food Services, we did form a food advisory committee, uh, seven property owners who are acting uh, in that capacity just like all the other advisory committees and they've been meeting on a weekly basis for the first three months so that they can uh, make any additions, corrections, changes, uh, positive things to, to the food service uh, operation. And when do you expect to see uh, the first financials from that? We'll, prob we'll probably see some at the April board meeting, but we really are going to wait for six months to have a six-month history before we really see how we're doing. It's time for one of my favorite segments on the board update, and that's hot topics. So let's talk about a few of those right now. As usual, the board is, has made or is considering decisions regarding a few hot topics. One of them affects the utilities in our village. What's new with the Water Authority? Well, right now there is... We're looking at, we're still looking at the Water Authority. It's a, it's a good possibility in that the uh, Water Authority would help cut down our costs. Uh, by if, it, if we did form a Water Authority or, and did transfer the infrastructure to a Water Authority, that authority could go out and get low interest long-term loans, could get grants, uh, do other things that would offset the cost that we're paying out of our pockets. Hopefully, if uh, that is still a possibility. Chet has been meeting with legislators and the lieutenant governor, and it's still in the works. Uh, what will happen, I don't know. At this point, we really have nothing uh, concrete to inform you about. So we're still working on it. We're still working so on it. So we'll keep following that, and we'll, uh, I'm sure you'll keep us informed if anything new happens. I will. So we'll be asking you about yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> so another hot topic is dogs being allowed in our outdoor dining areas. It came about as one of our restaurant servers was bitten by a dog and in one of our areas. The board reviewed the policy on allowing dogs and what was the outcome? Well, as you know, there was an incident over the Christmas holidays at the Kahiti restaurant where one of the servers was bitten by a dog. As a result of that, we got many inquiries concerning dogs from the residents and property owners. Uh, we decided to look at that. Uh, what we did was we went out to the other local communities, Verity Bay, Avalon, Tennessee National, um, the Fairfield Glade, and our sister community over in Arkansas, Hot Springs, as to what their policies were on dogs in the outside areas of the restaurant. All except Fairfield Glade allowed dogs in the outside area of the restaurants, which, is we, which we have done. And as we know, Teleco Village is a very dog-friendly community. There are a lot of dogs in Teleco Village. Uh, so we not, decided not to really make any changes other than to impose some common sense 
policies or regulations. One, the dog must be on a six foot leash or less. The owner must be responsible for the dog and maintain control of the dog. Uh, that the dog, if it becomes unruly, the management would have the right to uh, ask the dog and the dog owner to remove the dog. Uh, these are simply very common sense regulations or policies and we hopefully will have no further incidents in the future. And I understand that Tennessee law allows dogs to be in those outdoor dining areas and of course federal statute protects service dogs. So is there any liability to the POA? Well that is correct. I mean that the Tennessee law does allow dogs to be in the outside areas and service dogs are covered by the federal law. Because they're on your property if something does happen uh, there is some liability uh, but it's a liability we have insurance for uh, so hopefully and we don't, we don't have any further incidents and we won't have any further problems but so if, it do, if something does happen then we'll have to take another look at it. Well and as you mentioned in the common sense guidelines you're asking dog owners to assume responsibility and liability for their dog's behavior. That's correct. All right and the last hot topic trash pickup. Ah. It's one that's been around a couple of times and uh, we're approaching the end of the current trash pickup contract with Republic. What's next? Well, as you know, the, the trash contract with Republic does end by April 30th. Uh, tra Chet has been in constant contact with Republic, and we hope to have something positive or concrete at the, at the April board meeting. Uh, as you may know, our, our documents only allow us to have one trash pickup service in the village. So we can't have ten different companies coming in on ten different days, driving over the roads, causing damage to the roads, pick people's trash being picked up on all different days. So that's the reason we have one company. Most likely what's going to happen is, is going to remain the status quo. Uh, people who want to use Republic can use Republic. People who want to take their own trash to the dump on their own will be able to do so. Uh, so the only thing that's changed is they have changed some of the days, pickup days, uh, to make it more efficient. But we don't, I don't expect to be really any, any, big any big changes or differences in what we have now. And speaking of those changes in pickup days, some of our neighborhoods have had their days changed, and as you said, to improve efficiency. So these changes were communicated in the telegram. If you're not signed up to receive the telegram, that's the kind of important information you may be missing. You can sign up today at telecovillagepoa.org. All right, Bob. You handle today's hot topics like a pro. Oh. I'm sure there will be others during the next quarter, but for now, let's move on to a budgeted project for 2024. And that project is to add kayak storage and a launch near the Kahiti boat docks. What can you share with our viewers about that? Okay, the, Mar the Marine Advisory Committee, is along, with, along with the Marine uh, personnel, have identified an area at Kahiti uh, near the uh, pump house. I believe it's to the right of the pump house where there's a little cove for a 32 uh, kayak storage facility. So there will be, there'll be kayak storage facility going up there. There will also be a kayak launch in that same area. Well, uh, that's great news. I know our kayakers will be happy to hear and look forward to utilizing that amenity. Are there any other details you want to share about that? No, it was approved at the uh, March board meeting and hopefully we'll be getting started in the near future. That's great. So a top responsibility of the POA board is to work with the Finance Advisory Committee and the POA staff to manage the financial health of the village. Obviously finances are something that our viewers are always interested in. So that includes budgeting, reserves, short and long range planning and more. Why don't you give us a brief overview? What's the health report today on our village finances? The health report today is where the village is in very good financial shape as you may recall. Back in 2019, after we finished the uh, Kahiti Community Building and the Toka Clubhouse, we had approximately $1.8 million in reserves. At the end of 2023, we had close to $16 million in reserves, uh, not counting the insurance money, which is another $2.5 million that we received so far. So uh, the last four years, the POA board, through cost cutting and watching our, or pinching our penny, so to speak, uh, was able to save about $4 million a year to be reserves. Now, uh, those reserves uh, account is a, sp a spending account, as Chet likes to say, so we will be spending some of that money in the future. Uh, but right now, we're in, we're in pretty good shape financially. Uh, our income is good. Uh, there are more lots online, as we said, we're now paying. Uh, the amenities are being used, and the fees coming in for the amenities, uh, though they don't cover the entire amount of the use, uh, do cover most of it. Uh, we hopefully we will get started in the near future on some bigger projects, of course Tanasi being one, 
Uh, we've been talking about the, the water infrastructure and the sewer infrastructure for the past, I don't know, five or six years, and there's going to be some big projects coming down the road which will use uh, quite a bit of the, of the reserve money. So would you say overall, what kind of health is the Overall, the village is in very good health. We have very few lots that are, are property owners that are delinquent. We have some, but they're, uh, very, that they're very few. I think that most people in the village are very happy with the amenities, the way they're maintained. Uh, they're using the, the amenities. Last year in golf, we had a record year. We had 116,000 rounds of golf played versus the previous record was like 104 or 105. Uh, so it blew so, it away. So <laughs> it blew it away, yeah, really. It was so we're, you know, and the, the uh, uh, welcome, not the welcome center, the wellness center uh, is, got their largest number of members ever. Uh, pickleball courts are busy everywhere. Tennis courts are busy. Kayakers are busy. Boaters are busy. Uh, everything is... Uh, Villagers really are loving that active lifestyle, <laughs> all those amenities. They are. Board. They are. They definitely are. That's so great. Well, my thanks to you and the rest of the board for working so diligently to ensure that our finances remain in good shape, not only for today, but long into the future. Well. So, and thank you. You're off the hot seat. I'm, I'm off uh, the hot you, seat. You survived okay. your first quarterly board update. Thanks right. for taking the time to be here uh, today, keeping our viewers informed on board activities, and uh, we'll see you back here in July. And thank you for tuning in to your POA board update. And remember, you can watch the live stream of board meetings as they happen or on demand later. Just visit the TVN YouTube channel under live and there you will find videos of past board meetings. And be sure to join us again next quarter when we'll talk about more timely topics. As always, thank you for watching Teleco Village Network.